So when starting out on a design process for a project, I would often start generating concepts if I've got lots of ideas in my head through 2D sketching because it just gets you uh, straight into uh, idea onto paper and it's, it's a quick quick way of producing uh, concepts. So if we take a, uh, an example, a flat pack uh, desk for a student study space that is manufactured out of uh, melamine faced birch ply. Okay. So we're already thinking about materials and I'll demonstrate here the use of my two uh, main sketching instruments, the, the pencil and the, the biro. So make sure you've got HB. Um, so what I'll do here, just thinking about how the design could work. Obviously there's some prior knowledge I've attained about construction techniques with manufactured boards. So we've got the top of the desk here, the two legs, and then just with a basic understanding of frame construction, if you push on the top of the table like that, the legs are likely to uh, give way. So you need some sort of bracing within that. That will travel through. And this, this point here would be a cross halving joint. So I would know that, but a third party looking at my design work might not understand that. So that brings us on to uh, annotation. And you can start including that at this stage. So cross halving joint just in there, just a notation for that. Within the top of this, um, the top would actually sit on uh, some cutouts there. And, and at this stage, you can, within these profiles, include some cameo sketching, so showing construction. So what would happen here, uh, looking on the side view, my idea would be that the table, if the legs are a panel, essentially, top would actually drop on to some lugs machined you just put a cutaway on there machined into onto the end of that component and then the top would have two notches in it that would drop straight on and then maybe through the end face here there'd be some additional post processing we'd have some sort of grub screw or additional fixing maybe a nylon screw uh, that would go through to just locate and and lock that into place. So I'm think, really thinking here at the, at the onset of this um, about flat packing the design. So let's come up with another idea. Um, and this time I'll use the biro. So notice I'm using faint lines to start off with. Really making sure my hand's hovering off the page just running my pinky to enable me to sketch nice straight lines coming from the elbow. So this time I'm going to think about a design where um, if we put our floor level in again. So I'm already thinking this might not be feasible, but generate the idea. And at this stage, it's good that you can make adaptations to your design whilst you're using these faint sketch lines. And it really shows a story of, of how the idea progressed. So that's actually a cantilevered design. So your workspace would be under here. Um, but obviously within that design, you've got a real uh, key structural point here in terms of loading. So I've used my faint sketch tone. I'm just going to bring that medium tone in. to define some of these points. And again, that cross halving uh, technique here uh, could be used within this uh, join here, or even just that um, mechanical interference fit in this section. So once you've got some concepts down, even at this stage, you can 
applying um, some rendering will enable a third party to have a better understanding of what it is you're trying to design. So I'm going to bring in, because I'm going to do this with pencil crayon, I'm going to bring in the fine liner. Accentuate all those lines that are key lines that outline my conceptual product. I could do the same at the top. There's no need to go back over this and rub out the construction lines when using a pencil. I tend to find when using pencil though, over, over a design sheet, you end up going back over things and it, you end up with bits of graphite on the end of your finger and, and, and the paper, once you step back and have a look at it, doesn't look that, you don't have that crisp white background anymore. Um, and by the time you've, you've added any render into this, these faint lines, construction lines, you, from a visual perspective, you won't really notice them. So, um, birch ply is quite a striking material. You've obviously got those different that different layering system within the material. So, this edge here, in my concept, will be exposed with the 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 grain of the ply. So, I'm just going to show you that layering. And remember, ply's got that odd number of layers. Now, when I say melamine face apply, that's with a thermoset coating, usually about a millimetre thick, half a millimetre. And plywood's got that odd number of layers as well. And then what you might have is, so if we have like a um, contrasting design here. So some sort of grey, matte grey surface. And then maybe, um, in fact, if we just keep the ply design going on this one. Just shade back over that. Nothing is ever a pure yellow tone. Right, um, aesthetically, that's not come out as well as I'd hope. So I'm going to focus on that other design. And what I might add there is a more engaging uh, colour. So you, I would possibly look at having sketched that and the aesthetic of that. I would possibly consider edge banding this design. So that's where you have the same uh, surface coating for your melamine uh, board, but it's a, th a, th a thinner material that's either applied with an edge bander or ironed on, and that would seal the edge. So maybe actually if it was a, a dark grey surface, an orange edge banding would work quite well there. So that's th that really covers where you, you should be going with 2D concepts and, and what you can do with them. So the key, key points are, um, it's a quick way of getting idea to paper. Um, don't just have line drawings. Add some rendering to it to give an interpretation of uh, the material. Definitely annotate and explain. It doesn't need fully dimensioning, but explain key features. You know, like this is a cantilever design. Specific joints that you would need to think about should you be in a position where you were developing that idea in the future. And also link back to... Um, the, the original brief and, and, and how well this applies to the end user's uh, needs. Okay, so that continual evaluation through annotation is helpful.